Hey everybody, welcome back. So the video I had planned on doing today ended up being much longer than I had anticipated, so I had to break it down into a short series. Uh, so there will be several videos all coming out on this topic. Um, it's very interesting information, very strange to be honest. Um, some stuff that I found while doing some research over the weekend and uh, really strange, really contradictory information um, and things that just don't seem to make sense. Uh, so sit back, enjoy this video, enjoy the series. Thanks for watching. Over the past year, we keep hearing about how the healthcare system's going to be overrun. Uh, the hospitals are full and overflowing. They're at over 100% capacity, etc., etc. Uh, people are being treated in the hallways. The emergency rooms are full. The outpatient care rooms are full. All this kind of stuff. That's what we've been hearing from the media and the hospitals for the past 12 months, roughly. And that we have to do everything we can to prevent the hospitals and healthcare systems. Um, from being overrun, right? Well, that's what I'm going to take a look at today because I have found some information that seems to contradict these kinds of statements. Things that seem to be mutually exclusive, they cannot both be true at the same time. It is impossible. So, let's get down to it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, we're going to start off today at a noted far-right uh, conspiracy theory spewing Time Magazine. Hospitals, overwhelmed by flu patients, are treating them in tents. Oh, interesting. That sounds like what we've been hearing for a while now, right? All year, 2020, and so far in 2021, that the hospitals are overwhelmed. They're using tents as like an out, outpatient area outside of the hospital. Hmm. That's what we keep hearing. Well, let's check this out. I'm going to show you something interesting. Oops. <clears throat> this article is from January 18th of 2018. Not 2020, not 2021. January of 2018. Huh. That's interesting. Let's go over this. So, the 2017-2018 influenza epidemic is sending people to hospitals and urgent care centers in every state, and medical centers are responding with extraordinary measures, asking staff to work overtime, setting up triage tents, restricting friends and family visits, and canceling elective surgeries, to name a few. Why does that sound familiar? Why does that... Oh, gosh, that just sounds so damn familiar. Maybe you can help me out with this. Post a comment if it just seems really strangely familiar to you. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Let's keep going. We are pretty much at capacity, and the volume is certainly different from previous flu seasons, says Dr. Alfred Talia, professor and chair of family medicine at the Robert Wood Johnson Medical Center in New Brunswick, New Jersey. I have been in practice for 30 years, and it's been a good 15 or 20 years since I've seen a flu-related illness scenario like we've had this year. Interesting. So the flu was really bad in 2017, 2018. Now, hang on, hang on. I promise you, this has a point to COVID. Just bear with me. Talia says his hospital is managing just barely at keeping up with the increased number of sick patients in the last three weeks. The hospital's urgent care centers have also been inundated, and its outpatient clinics have no appointments available. It's really sounding familiar. It's almost like, whew, strange. The story is similar in Alabama, which declared a state of emergency last week in response to the flu epidemic. 
Dr. Bernard Cummins, Caymans, I don't know, Associate Professor of Infectious Diseases at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. By the way, it's a fantastic medical school, in case you don't know. Uh, says that UAB Hospital canceled elective surgery scheduled for Thursday and Friday of last week to make more beds available for flu patients. Not COVID. This is just the damn flu, you guys. And it had hospitals backed up. Think about that. <clears throat> He goes on, we had to treat patients in places where we normally wouldn't, like in recovery rooms. The emergency room was very crowded, both with six patients who needed to be admitted and patients who just needed to be seen and given Tamiflu. Oh. So we've got a doctor from Alabama, we've got a doctor from New Jersey, and let's keep going. In California which has been particularly hard hit by this season's flu. Several hospitals have set up large surge tents outside their emergency departments to accommodate and treat flu patients. Even then, the LA Times reported this week, emergency departments had standing room only and some patients had to be treated in hallways. Stop me if you've heard this before. Let's keep going, because this isn't just certain places. Keep going, bam. The Lehigh Valley Health System in Allentown, Pennsylvania set up a similar surge tent in its parking lot on Monday in response to an increase to an increase in patients presenting with various viral illnesses, including norovirus, respiratory syncytial virus, I guess that's how it's pronounced, and the flu. We've put it into operation a couple of times now over the last few days, said a hospital spokesperson. I think Tuesday we saw upwards of about 40 people in the tent itself. Let's keep going. Many hospitals are encouraging visitors to stay away. Keep this in mind. Keep this in the back of your head on the back burner. Kaiser Permanente Los Angeles Medical Center announced last week that it was temporarily restricting visits from children 14 and under and anyone with flu symptoms. This measure is to prevent unnecessary spread of influenza and to protect you, our patients and our staff. Huh. Well, if we don't go to the hospital because of the flu, because it's going to protect me, other patients, and the staff at the hospital, then why are we sending COVID patients to the hospitals? I mean, I'm no doctor, but I've heard several anecdotal stories of people going to the hospital with COVID and then just going home the exact same day. Or some people not going to the hospitals at all. I had a couple of friends tell me they never even went. They stayed home because they were afraid of being quarantined and locked up in a hospital for like three weeks and stuck on a ventilator with terrible medical care because they keep hearing about how the hospitals are all overcrowded and full and they, they were worried they would be stuck in the hallway with no privacy, you know, this kind of stuff. So they never went to the hospital. <sighs> Let's keep going. Getting deeper and deeper in this rabbit hole. Loyola University Health System in Chicago, which set a hospital flu activity record of 190 confirmed cases between January 7th and 13th, has also instituted similar visitor restrictions, although a spokesperson for the hospital says it's a standard precaution for a flu season. Loyola also requires all employees to receive a mandatory flu shot, a policy that started in 2009. Well, sounds good. Sounds like a smart idea. And it keeps going. This isn't just major cities. We've had Chicago, Los Angeles, New Jersey, uh, Alabama, Pennsylvania. Here we have Fenton, Missouri. SSM Health St. Clair Hospital has opened its emergency overflow wing as well as all outpatient centers and surgical holding centers to make more beds available to patients who need them. Nurses are being 
pulled from all floors to care for them, says registered nurse Jennifer Brzezewski, some Polish name, and are being offered an increased hourly rate to work above and beyond their normal schedules. Huh. Many nurses have also become sick, however, so the staff is also shorthanded. Gosh. Hmm. I don't know, but I swear this just sounds so familiar. Now here's where we get to a real good part. The flu has especially affected hospital patients with other health issues, says Brzezewski, who works with cardiac patients. Almost every patient in the hospital has the flu, and it's making their pre-existing conditions worse. More and more patients are needing mechanical ventilation due to respiratory failure from the flu and other rampant upper respiratory infections. Remember, children, this article is from 2018. This is pre-COVID. Everything you are hearing about COVID is nothing new. This shit is normal. Overcrowded hospitals happens every year especially in major urban areas. It's not common in Alabama and Missouri and small towns in Pennsylvania, but it is common in major cities like Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York City. So down here, at, almost at the end of this article, we get to the one last paragraph that has really good pertinent information. So. Doctors say it's not too late to get a flu shot, blah, 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 right? That's great. They're also encouraging otherwise healthy people who think they have the flu to call their primary care doctors rather than visit the emergency room, especially while hospital volume is so high. Now, if the hospital volume is so high, just in a normal, in, in a flu season, now granted, this is not a normal flu season, this was a very bad flu season in the United States. But, if this is a, uh, this is an abnormal flu season, and there are more deaths this, this particular year, there were more deaths, there were more uh, patients for flu and other respiratory illnesses but they still told people to stay home. They encouraged people to stay home, even if they think they have the flu, right here. Otherwise healthy people who think they have the flu to call their doctors rather than visit, visit the emergency room. Why aren't we doing the same with COVID? If you're an otherwise healthy person who thinks you have COVID, but you don't be you don't seem to be having any symptoms or showing any symptoms or any perhaps really bad symptoms, why aren't we sending the same message? Stay your ass at home. Don't go to the hospital and spread it and make it worse. Why is this not being told to people? At least for the young healthy people who are not experiencing severe symptoms. Seems a bit strange, doesn't it? Let's keep going down this rabbit hole, because I'm telling you, it goes real deep. <sighs> okay, thanks for watching part one of this series. I apologize for the... Um, clicking noises. I don't know what's doing that. My microphone does it from time to time. I don't know why. Sometimes I record and I get nothing. Sometimes I record and I get that. And I don't know if that noise happens until after I go back and start listening to the video after it's finished recording. So I don't know. Um, it's one of, the, one of the kinks I'm going to have to work out from doing this. Anyways, stay tuned for part two as we will be going over... Um, what seems to be manipulation of numbers and the motivations behind it.
Um, there is plenty of evidence to suggest that the COVID patient numbers, uh, uh, numbers of cases and numbers of deaths have been manipulated. And we will discuss with evidence, with actual evidence that has been fact checked <laughs> later on in this series, uh, proving that there is a motivation for hospitals to manipulate their numbers. I don't have any evidence of it, obviously. I'm not a, ho I'm not, I'm not a doctor, I don't work at a hospital, but there is plenty of motivation. So stay tuned, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Definitely share it if you think this information is pertinent and others should know about it. Thank you. Until next time, I remain the Neo-Bohemian.